Cool. So let me share my screen and we get started. All right, so first things first, let's maybe just talk about uh, AWS resource management for a while. I'm sure Chandra went over this on Saturday, but um, for pretty much the entirety of the cohort, we're going to be building and destroying because we don't want to run up all these um, resource costs. So when you're finished with a project and you feel good about it, you just hop over to the AWS console, you go over the instance, for example, or whatever resource it is, and you just terminate or whatever the equivalent is for whatever service you're trying to remove. All right, so that's going to take a while to disappear. Once it stops, I believe it stays in here for about up to an hour. But at that point, it will no longer be incurring costs. So, all right, let's let's backtrack a bit. Let's just talk about what was going on on Saturday because it's going to lead us into the second part of the Elastic Compute Cloud um, challenge for our lesson. Actually, I want to pull this up from the Git repository. It, it looks a little nicer from there. So week six, EC2. You all should have done this already as well. So everybody has the AWS command line set up correctly, correct? Cool. Let's skip that then and let's go over to EC2. So you talked about web servers last Saturday. You use the AWS console to set up an EC2 instance with Ubuntu 22 as the AMI. Things like instance type, region, I believe all of that is going to more or less be the same. Um, and you should have already set up a security group. Is this still recording? Okay. I just got a notification saying I'm low on space. You should have already set up a security group with these um, configurations. And so you can just reuse that every time you set up a new EC2. From there, we will SSH into the server and just like last week, install a bunch of packages manually. The goal is to get a feel for what the setup is like because tomorrow we're gonna to be covering RDS. That's relational database uh, system or service. And more or less that and LAMP allow you to do the same thing, except LAMP gives you a little more control. What LAMP really stands for is Linux, um, Apache, MySQL, and PHP admin. So really that's kind of like a tech stack, right? That's the framework that we're installing to host a web server and a database, which we are gonna be installing manually, command by command. The alternative is to use RDS, which we'll walk through tomorrow and we'll see how much quicker it is, but we'll also see and be able to compare why you may still want to go with a LAMP stack in some situations. So with that said, uh, let's take a look at our AWS console. I'm gonna go ahead and make a new instance. And it's gonna be called, I don't know, AJWJB LAMP. And we will select for our AMI. Again, AMI is Amazon Machine Image. We're gonna select Amazon Linux 2. All of this can stay the same. We want to use T2 Micro again, and we wanna select our classes key pair login. That way I could just use the same PEM file that's already on my local machine. From there, I am going to select an existing security group, and I'm gonna select mine, and now I should be good to go. That's pretty much it. Everything else can 
retain its default values. So we configured a name, an AMI, an instance type, and security group configurations. Oh, and the key pair login. So really five things. Let's go ahead and launch that. Let's wait for it to set itself up. This will take us directly to the instance. If we click on the instance ID, we can see more information about it. And we can see that we're not quite able to connect just yet because it's still setting up. So what we're gonna do is just take a look at this interface just to continue becoming more and more familiar with it. You'll basically have this pattern of having a lot of information right in front of you. Let's see if we collapse that. And then you'll be able to see tabs that give you access to additional views. So if you, for example, needed to add additional roles or security groups or settings, you would go to the security tab. Um, same thing for the rest of these, basically. You're going to be navigating the console with a setup that really looks similar to this for a lot of different AWS services. So you'll get more used to it over time. Let's refresh because it should be ready to use. So I'm going to hit connect and I'm going to connect by SSH. And the cool thing about this console page is you could just copy this command, which will use the hem file that you had selected and will automatically generate an SSH command going to the IPv4 address of the instance. So if I hop back into my terminal, I can just go ahead and, oh, before I, before I, actually paste that command. I'm just going to type an ls to show you what's in my current directory. So I am in the same directory where my pen file is. In this case, cp class dash devops ew dash bravo dot pem. So now that I'm in the right directory, I could use this command and it's going to ask me if I'm sure I'm going to say yes. And now I am on my EC2 instance. All right, we are now ready to start running some of these commands so we can install a LAMP tech stack into this EC2 instance. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna use sudo yum update y. Similar to how you've used in the past sudo apt or sudo apt get to update, Yum is just a different package manager. This dash Y parameter is basically an option that will automatically pass in a yes response to all interactive terminal prompts. So if I were to exclude this, it will ask me at various points if I want to do something. Is this okay? I'm going to say yes. With that dash Y parameter, you could just bypass all of these interactive terminal prompts, and that can make setup uh, go a little faster. Now that we have uh, updated our package manager, we can use Amazon Linux extras, which is a command that's available on the Amazon um, Amazon uh, Linux 2 AMI, but not on the Ubuntu 22 AMI. We could use this command. We're going to pass in the Y parameter again to install two packages, MariaDB 10.2 using PHP version 7.2 and PHP version 7.2. Whoops. I've got my S and it, there's something else it doesn't like, sudo Amazon dash Linux dash extras. I've forgotten my install command. So let, let's add that. And now we should be good to go.
Hey, uh, Julius, just a quick question. Can the, the central axis, if, if the structures are going to be on the on the curriculum, can, can they just go be done with their project and let it do it by themselves later? Oh, yeah, totally. Um, but yeah, that's what we've been uh, doing for this first part. If they want, if they need to uh, focus on their projects, do that. J jump into a breakout room and do that because I know you all have that. That, that should be the, t the priority because you could always come back to these videos and watch them later. All right, that should answer your question for anybody else had the same question. And if there's any questions about it, you could just ping me your Slack and then I'll be able to explain them more. Thank cool. you. All right. So we have this uh, installed. And now we're going to install the Apache web server, MariaDB, and PHP software packages. So again, we're using sudo yum. I'm going to say install. We're going to pass in dash y so we don't have to respond to the prompts. And then we're going to say all well, the name of these packages that were installed. So let's hit enter. Like the uh, note in the readme says, we can use the install command and pass in multiple packages to get all related dependencies installed at the same time. And from here, we could run a uh, yum info on various package names. So if we were to run this on HPD, it tells us that these are some loaded plugins and then it gives us all this other information about this package, its version, its release, its size, et cetera. So now that we've got Apache installed, we can start the Apache web server. So let's do a sudo system control. This command should look familiar to you by now, HTTPD. And we didn't get anything in our terminal. So let me run a status just to make sure it's running. Cool. So using system control status, I can see that we have an active instance of Apache. Everything looks good. I'm not seeing any errors. And so we can move on. Uh, now that we've started it, we can enable it which will allow it to start at um, every time we boot the system, which won't really apply to us right now because we'll be deleting this instance immediately afterwards, but it's good to get the muscle memory in. So now that um, we've done that, we could also use is enabled another system control command to see if it's been enabled. All right, looking good so far. So it says I can now open the IPv4 address of my server and it should show the default Apache page. So let's do that. Let's go back to our instance. Let's go to our public IPv4 address and you could either copy it and manually paste it in or you could just click on this link. And you might notice this when you first do this. If you recall, well, let me just show you right here. I'm going to delete this S. And now I see the Apache page. If you recall how we set up our security configuration, we used um, port 84 an HTTP connection. So that's why we had to change the address from HTTPS to HTTP. And now that we have the default page, we could start tweaking. Am I, am I doing the right one, by the way? Is this the one that Chandra ran through? Okay, no, it's not, is it? Okay, cool. Um, where was I? Oh, right. So mm -hmm. 
in addition to being able to see this default page, we can sudo into a root user and run this command. So what does what did this command do? Can anyone tell me? Um, Isn't it changing that PHP page? Yes. It's. I don't think it's changing the the default page, but if you notice the redirect here. Uh, basically, this command is being, the, the output of this command is being passed into this new file. So let's go ahead and copy this file, or the file name, I should say, and let's append it to the end of our path. And now we could see the file that was generated. Cool. So from here, we can we can run through this at the end, but basically we have uh, bash scripts for all of these uh, lists of commands. So while while it really doesn't take too long, you could set all of this up a lot faster just by throwing all of this into a bash script and then running that bash script from the command line. So now that we have Apache set up, Let's go ahead and set up a database. And this time, instead of PostgreSQL, like we have been doing, we're going to use MariaDB. So sudo system control start MariaDB. We installed this earlier, so we can start it. And we're going to need to do a setup for it, just to set up some default values. Here's the automatic version utilizing a bash script. We are hopping into the MySQL terminal as a root user. We then run an update on MySQL user, and we set a password. I believe this is a password hash because it uses password. And then we set the user to root. From there, we delete uh, the MySQL user if it's not in any of these groups, because these are the only groups that we want, and then we delete the default MySQL user if it doesn't have any username at all. And then we run a flush privileges, which will update the settings. So let's look at how this looks like if we were to do this the manual way. So I'm gonna do a sudo MySQL secure installation and it's gonna ask me for a lot of similar things. So I'm gonna set a password for root. I'm gonna do PW. Oh, it's asking me for the password. Okay, I don't think I have a password set for root, so I'm just gonna hit enter because I don't have one. And now it's gonna ask me if I wanna set a root password. And I wanna say yes, because I wanna try to use this root user to sign into the admin page later on and the admin page is configured to always require a password so i'm going to say yes and i'm going to now i type in pw because that's the password i want and i'm going to confirm that remove anonymous users yes that's essentially what's happening here and if we read this uh this little paragraph here, we see that by default, a MariaDB installation has an anonymous user allowing anyone to log into MariaDB without having to have a user account created. And this is intended only for testing and to make installation a bit smoother. So they advise that you remove them before moving into a production environment. You don't really have to worry about that because we're not moving into a production environment, but it's good to know anyway. So let's go ahead, remove anonymous users. And do we want to just allow root login remotely? If I want to try to hop into the PHP admin console, 
I might have to set this to no. So I'm going to say no for now. Uh, remove test database and access to it. Mm, no, I want to be able to access test database and reload the privileges. Yes, and that's essentially flush privileges. So you have the option of doing this manually or automatically through a script. I For this situation, I prefer the manual process because it allows me to make decisions that I may not always want to make, decisions that are unique to my current use case. Okay, from there, we can create a new user just in case we can't log in with root for whatever reason. So let's hop into MySQL as root. You should recognize the syntax from PostgreSQL. Oh, I, I did set a password, so let's see if... Okay, it wants me to add, okay. Delete that. I did. I should not have passed it in through the command line. I should enter it when it prompts me. And now I am inside my MariaDB terminal. From here, I can run some commands that should look familiar to you. So create user, user at localhost. And identified is what's going to set the password. Again, I'm just going to do something simple. I'm going to make sure I spelled identified right because I'm a sloppy typer. I'm going to hit enter. I'm going to use my semicolon because I forgot my semicolon. And now, if I want to confirm that this user was created, I could do something like select grantee from information underscore schema dot user privileges. And I'm going to group by grantee. And I see that we have these root users root at localhost, and the user at localhost that we created. Cool. So now that we've got Apache installed and configured, we've got MariaDB installed and configured. We have PHP. We have PHP installed, but not PHP my admin. So let's go ahead and install that. So we're going to do a sudo yum install php mv string php xml dash y to automatically respond yes to prompts. And I am actually going to copy that and exit out of this terminal because this is not where I should be passing that in. And now that we have these dependencies installed, we're going to want to restart Apache. So we're going to use system control restart for HCPD. And then we're going to restart this PHP dash FPM. I'm going to run a status because it didn't tell me anything. Okay, see now it's active and it's been active since eight seconds ago. So that tells me this restart succeeded. And now I'm going to do a pseudo system control restart PHP FPM. Just like before, I'm going to run status. I see it just restarted four seconds ago. So everything is looking good. Now I'm going to CD into this directory, which is the Apache document root directory, rwwhtml. Let's take a look at what's inside of here. It's that PHP info file that we generated earlier. We're going to install a package from the PHP My Admin official page. And I'm, I haven't tried the second one yet, but I included it anyway because that's what was in the automatic script. I'm going to run this because I know it works. And I'm just going to copy paste that because I'm not going to retype that. Um, wget is the same command you saw Chandra use the other day when he installed the Dojo Jump app from his repository. We see that the wget command was successful. 
And from here, we can make a new directory for PHP my admin. So PHP my admin. And here I'm going to unzip the contents of this zip file that I just downloaded. So let me do an ls again. We see that I've got the zip. I've got my new folder. I am going to run unzip php my admin, just the file name basically. Five. I can hit tab to autocomplete. And then I'm going to say dash d php my admin. All right. Let's hit enter because I know it's going to work. The other option is very similar, except instead of a zip file, we're using a tar file, a tarball, which is basically a Linux um, version of a zip file. So the only real difference is, aside from the contents, because it could be an entirely different version, the only difference is the command you use to unpack it. So in this case, these this is the command. Um, I'm not sure what a lot of these parameters mean. So I'm not going to try to read through that. And from there, if we had a successful unzip, I'm going I'm to run ls on PHP my admin. Cool. It looks like it successfully installed something, I can go ahead and remove this zip file. I no longer need it. I've already unpacked it. So my admin dash five tab autocomplete CD into this new directory just to take a look. And I see a bunch of files, which tells me that this is probably working. So Let's see if we have MariaDB running. I believe we do. All right. Looks like it's been running for the past 10 minutes. And now, again, there's a way to just do all of this through a single bash script. And now we can visit PHP my admin to see the results. Cool. So we see the directory. We saw a link to the package that we um, unzipped. And from here, we could log in as, hopefully, as root user. And now I have access to my PHP, my admin, I don't know, console, portal, whatever you want to call it. Any questions? Cool. That is uh, pretty much it. Uh, now that I'm finished with this, I can go ahead and go back to AWS and terminate my instance. But I might actually keep it up just for this afternoon in case anybody has any questions and we need to hop back in here to look at anything. So I'll leave that open. I'm going to kill the recording and anyone that's still around can take a 15 minute break.